Šis bija ļoti, ļoti tāds labi vērtīgs pasākums, jo tas nav skatīties YouTube video kaut kādus un domāt, ka sazvērstības teorijas mēs te izplatām un šeit mēs redzējām reālu Anglijas parlamentu esošu deputātu. Ok, my name is Andrew Bridge and I'm the member of parliament for North West Leicestershire, that's right in the very centre of the United Kingdom. Man sauc, labdien visiem, man sauc Andrew Brikšens un es esmu parlamenta loceklis un pārstāvu Ziemeļu rietu un Lesteršīru, kas ir pašā apvienotās Karalistas centrā. North West Leicestershire is my home, it's where I was brought up. The people I represent are the people I have been to school with and I have worked with all of my life. Ziemeļa rietuma Lesteršīra ir manas mājas, tur es esmu uzaudzis šo vietu es pārstāvu, tur es esmu mācījies skolā un strādājis un paudījis visu savu dzīvi. I was first elected in 2010 and I took my seat from the Socialist Party, the Labour Party. Pirmo reiz tiku ievēlēt 2010. gadā pārstāvot Sociālistu partiju Labouristus. And every time I've been re-elected four times, I've increased my majority. And at the last election in 2019, there were six candidates on the ballot paper. I got 63% of all the votes. Chairmanship, I too would like to thank the 116,000 members of the public who signed this public petition so that we can have this important debate. Četras reizes es esmu ticis pārvēlēts un esmu saņēmis arvien vairāk atbalstītāju un vairāk balsu. 2019. gadā no sešu kandidātu saraksta es ieguvu 63% balsu. And I was thrown out of the Conservative Party, the party that I'd served for decades uh, last year, for speaking out about the safety and efficacy of, of the vaccines. <coughs> Un pagājuši gadu man izmeta no konservatīvo partijas, kurā es biju darbojies vairākus desmit gadus par to, ka es runāju par vakcīnu, drošību un ebriskumu. And when that happened, the BBC said to me, why are you willing to sacrifice your political career on the hill of vaccine harms? Un tad, kad tas notika, tad BBC man vaicāja, kāpēc vai jūs gribat upurēt savu politisko karjeru uz vakcīnu nodarītā kaitēju kalda. And I told the BBC and I told the nation, that's because that's the hill you're killing my people on. Un tad es teicu BBC un savai tautai, ka tāpēc, ka tas ir tas kauns, uz kura jūs nogalināt manu tautu. Vaccines or drugs are still under trial and not fully tested, then the issue of being subject to an experiment is also real. There's a very clear intent to employ the CEPI 100 day, that's the Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness and Innovations 100 day vaccine program. <laughs> The looks on your faces as you've listened to what Philip has got to say, and I can see your concern. And I wish I could stand up here and tell you you've got nothing to worry about, but everything that Philip said to you is in these treaties, these two instruments, and there is a huge threat to all of us. Un es gribētu, lai es varētu piecelties un teikt, nerādzējieties, viss būs labi. Bet, diemžēl, es ne to nevaru, man ir jāapstiprina, ka viss, ko Filips teica, ir patiesība, un ka šie divi līgumi ir instrumenti, kas dara raizes. Our democracies are under threat as they never have been before. Not just in my country, not just in Europe, but around the whole world. And it's not this time, it's not uh, President Putin's armies on our borders or President Xi's expansionist ideas. The threat is actually from the corruption and decay of our own institutions. Mūsu demokrātie šobrīd ir atbraudēts tā, kā vēl nekad iepriekš. Gan manā valstī, apvienotajā karalistē, gan Eiropā, gan visur pasaulē. 
My ministers will work closely with international partners to support Ukraine, strengthen NATO, and address the most pressing security challenge. These two WHO instruments, the so-called pandemic agreement now, and the amendments to the international health regulations will usurp power over all the people and neutralize, completely neutralize the accountability of our own parliaments. As Philip has explained, uh, the powers that these instruments will give to the uh, Director General of the WHO, an unelected, unaccountable, non-taxpaying, immune from prosecution individual, giving him ultimate power over all our democracies, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> Mēs atdodam šīs pilnvaras pasaules veselības organizācijas ģenerāla direktoram, kas ir nevēlēta persona, kas nevienam neatskaitās, nemaksā nodokļus un nav pakļauta kriminālu vajāšanē. Tad mēs, mēs atdodam šo, šīs pilnvaras viņam, tad kas mums vairs atliek pēc tam? The WHO have not had any uh, review of their recommendations that they made during the COVID-19 pandemic. So sure are they that their recommendations were perfect. And what we've actually experienced has been a litany of disaster and failure of those, of, for those recommendations being implemented across all of our countries. Pasaules veselības organizācija vēl nav pārskatījusi savas rekomendācijas, ko tā izsniedza COVID-19 laikā. Viņi ir tik pārliecināti, ka viņa rekomendācijas ir bijušas perfektas. Bet tas, ko mēs esam piedredzējuši, ir neskaitāmas problēmas, ko šīs rekomendācijas ir radījušas. If the WHO really wanted to prevent the next pandemic, I mean, surely they would have actually carried out a proper investigation as to who funded, who worked on, and which labs created the COVID-19 virus, which was released on the world and caused such devastation. Yeah, <coughs> Hello, uh, I'm Colonel Matt Hepburn. Uh, I'm a program manager in the Biological Technologies Office uh, at DARPA. I am a active duty Army infectious diseases physician and have specialized in uh, addressing biological threats um, that can either be engineered or naturally occurring, such as Ebola or pandemic influenza. The, the fact that the WHO aren't interested in finding out who created COVID-19 and who released it from the lab is very telling. And if these two instruments go through, there's going to be a lot more of these labs sharing all the pathogens that are found anywhere in the world. Tas fakts, ka Pasaules Veselības organizācija neinteresē, ka, kurš ir radījis un kurš ir izplatījis COVID-19 vīrusu, tas jau liecina kaut ko pats par sevi. Un ja tiks pieņemti šie divi instrumenti, tad visā pasaulē būs vēl vairāk tādu laboratoriju, kurās notiks apmaiņa ar vīrusiem. Last, the last 12 months, there were over 300 documented accidental releases and infections from biolabs just in the United States. I mean, clearly, 
these recommendations go through and we have to share all these pathogens with all the countries of the world. There'll be more biolabs and more scope for the release of very harmful pathogens. Izvešanas, jo iznešanas ārpus bio laboratorijām Amerikas Savienotajās valstīs, un lai paredzētu, ka ja stāties spēkā šie divi instrumenti, šie divi līgumi, un tad Pasaules veselības organizācijas rekomendācija rezultātā šāda laboratorija būs visā pasaulē vēl vairāk. The WHO, as Philip has pointed out, wants a monopoly of control of, 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 of world health. Pasaules veselības organizācija, kā jau Filips minēja, vēlas monopolu pasaules veselības kontrolē. Can you imagine how ludicrous that is? That one solution fits the whole world, regardless of geography, history, customs, and whether you're in the north or, or southern hemisphere, which your experience of a respiratory virus will be completely different. Un vai jūs spējat apsvērt, cik tas ir smieklīgi, ka viens risinājums tagad būs nodarīgs visai pasaulē, kur ir visdažādākie geogrāfiskie, vēsturiskie, kultūras apstākļi, kur ir ziemeļi un dienvidi, kur respiratorās slimības izpaužas dažādi un tiek dažādi ārstēts. From human experience, we know that monopolies are not really very successful. Competition, different solutions, that is desirable. If there were only one car that was available in the world, does any of you think it would be the best car we could possibly build? The WHO is part of the United Nations and I think all 196 member states of the UN are members of the WHO except for Liechtenstein and the Holy See. The Vatican. The Pasaules Veselības Organizācija ir apvienoto nāciju sastāvā un no visām 196. apvienoto nāciju dalību valstīm vairums ir arī Pasaules Veselības Organizācija dalību valstīs Lichtenstein un Vatikā. But the WHO is not funded significantly any longer by, by its member states that it will seek to control with these new regulations. It's funded. It's not funded. Eighty-four, eighty-six percent of the funding of the WHO is is by voluntary funding, and often by organisations who would seek to have a very strong interest or funded by the same people who've made a lot of money out of these new experimental uh, mRNA vaccines. So if the elected officials in your country or the elected officials in my country sign up to these two instruments, we're giving away sovereignty to an unaccountable, unelected, non-taxpaying, immune from prosecution organisation which is actually under the financial control of third parties. This is very dangerous. Līdz ar to, 
ir jā, amatpersonas manā valstī vai jūsu valstī paraksta šos divus instrumentus, līgumus, tad mūsu veselība nonāk tādas organizācijas rokās, kas ir bezatbildīgi, ņemot vērā tos visus raksturotāju lielumus, kas tika minēti iepriekš, un bez tam, kuru kontrolē finansiāli trešās puses, kas atbrodas finansiāli trešo pušu kontrolē, tas ir apdraudējums. All the director general of the WHO has to do, as Filip has said, is call, announce a public health emergency of international concern, and he will take powers over all of our nations immediately. Pasaules Veselības organizācijas ģenerāla direktoram ir tikai jāizziņo pasaules mēroga veselības apdraudējums, un tas viņš tūlīt pārņems kontroli par mūsu visu nācijā. He will have powers over all the levers of our governments, all private businesses, all third sector charities as well. And it's the one health policy which they're bringing in, which means that health affects every part of our lives, which then gives the WHO control over every aspect of our lives. Viņi kontrolēs pasaules veselības organizāciju, pārņems kontroli par mūsu valstu vadītājiem, valdību vadītājiem, par privāto biznesu, par nevalstiskajām organizācijām, jo veselība ir joma, kas ietekmē visas pārējās mūsu dzīves jomas, tātad pasaules veselības organizācija pārņems kontroli par visu mūsu dzīvi. These two instruments and the public health emergency of international concern, it widens the scope of issues that the Director General can uh, call these international emergencies. It can be for a human pathogen, an animal pathogen, or some perceived threat to our environment anywhere in the world, or the risk of any of those things. Un šie divi instrumenti, kas ļauj izziņot globālu veselības apdraudējumu, tagad jaunajā redakcijā paplašinās šo kontroles jomu vai gadījumu jomu, kur būs iespējams izziņot šo pandēmiju cilvēka vai dzīvnieka patogēna gadījumā, arī vides apdraudējuma gadījumā, vai, ja tiek uzskatīts, ka pastāv vides apdraudējums, vai arī, ja pastāv risks šiem apdraudējumiem. And I'm afraid the WHO instruments, the pandemic agreement and the amendments to the International Health Organization join an ever-lengthening list of things which you don't see or read about in your or my mainstream media with vaccine harms, excess deaths and everything else. Un baidos, ka attiecībā uz šiem diviem PVO instrumentiem, pandēmijas līguma un labojumiem veselības, startotiskajā veselības regulējumā, tur ir daudzas detaļas, ko neuzsver un par kuriem neklāsta jūsu mēdīja, un tie ir saistīti ar apdraudējumiem, ko rada vakcīnas. Nobody wants to talk about it in the British Parliament. We've only had two debates. And both of those became because of public petitions of over a hundred thousand electors signing public petitions for us to have a debate on each one of, of the instruments, um, which under our parliamentary rules, they have to be considered if there's that level of public interest. But there is no interest amongst the elected representatives. Un par šiem instrumentiem nevēlas runāt Britu parlaments, līdz šim ir bijušas tikai divas debates, un tās notika pēc sabiedrības pieprasījuma, kad sabiedrība parakstīja petīciju, un ja to parakstā šos piedienu uzliek vairāk nekā 100 tūkstoši vēlētāju, tad parlamentā ir jāturu debates, tika notrāds debates par šiem diviem instrumentiem, bet paši vēlētie pārstāvi neizrāda interesi par tiem. A third debate reached a hundred thousand threshold, which which would normally trigger a, a parliamentary debate. But the motion was that we should, in the UK, leave our membership of 
uh, the WHO, given the risks of these instruments and the impingement of our, our sovereignty. And it will come as no surprise to you that my parliament refused to actually even have that debate, despite the fact that it had reached the threshold. Savukārt, trešās debates tām tika sasniegts aizīgais liekas, es 100 tūkstoši cilvēku pieprasījums, bet šeit tika pieprasīts, lai apiemotā karaliste, ņemot vērā šo divu instrumentu apdraudējumu, izstātos no pasaules veselības organizācijas. Tāpēc jums nebūs nekāds pārsteigums, ka parlaments attiecās noturēt šīs debates, kaut arī tika izpildīta prasība attiecībā uz cilvēku skaidru pieprasību. And my message to all elected politicians around the world is that if you agree to these two instruments going forward, you will be betraying your own people, the people who put their trust in you to stand up in your elected assemblies and to represent the best interests of your people. It will be a betrayal of the democratic system and we will be bringing in, by the back door, a world government. Un es vēlos, lai, lai visi vēlētie politiķi uh, saprastu, ka ja viņi piekritīs uh, šiem diviem instrumentiem, tad viņi nodos uh, savu tautu, kas ir viņiem uzticējusies, uh, kas viņiem ir uzticējis būt, uh, pārstāvēt viņus, uh, ka viņi arī nodos demokrātiju savās valstīs uh, un uh, tas novedīs pie tādas pasaules valdības. The Director General of the WHO not only has the power to declare the beginning of a public health emergency of international concern, he also decides how long it will last for. And I put it to you that once they've taken these huge powers over the whole world, that it'll be a very long time before those powers are ever, if ever, are returned to our own sovereign parliaments. Pasaules veselības organizācijas ģenerāla direktoram ir pilnvarni ne tikai izsludināt globālo veselības apdraudējumu, bet arī noteikt uz cik ilgu laiku šis apdraudējums pastāvēs. Un es jums varu garantēt, ka, ja reiz šis apdraudējums tiks izsludināts, tad viņi centīsies, lai tas paliktas spēkā pēc iespējas ilgāk. I wish what I was telling you wasn't the truth, but it is 100% the truth. And as Winston Churchill said, with regards to the truth, they can criticize it, they can deride it, but ultimately, there it is. Un es gribētu, lai viss, ko es jums teicu, nebūtu patiesība, bet, diemžēl, tas ir sinsprocentīga patiesība, un, kā teica Winston Churchills, var kritizēt, noliekt patiesību, taču gal beigās tev tā ir. Well, the world will do the right thing so that the next pandemic, uh, things will be good. I led part of, I was one of the leaders of the Leave campaign in the UK to leave the European Union. I am shocked as supposedly we left the European Union. The powers that my Parliament are looking to give away to the WHO make being in the European Union look like a democratic paradise compared <laughs> to these two instruments and the powers, the dictatorial powers will be giving effectively to one man. Un savu laiku es uh, vadīju kampaņu par uh, apvienotās karalistas izstāšanos no Eiropas Savienības, un man tas ir šoks, uh, ka mana valdība šobrīd tieši ir tādas pilnvaras uh, pasaules veselības organizācijas, kas salīdzinājumā ar to Eiropas Savienība tagad šķiet kā demokrātiska paradīze. Mr. President, Latvia remains a strong advocate of the Agenda 2030 to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals, both nationally, and globally.
Latvia shows leadership in this field. According to World Economic Forum Global Gender Gap Report of 2018, Latvia is one of the only few countries in the world that has closed the gap both in terms of health and survival and in educational attainment. Through bilateral development cooperation programs, Latvia is contributing to the implementation of the Agenda 2030. In my own country, I think many people have taken democracy, freedom, human rights for granted. Es domāju, ka manā valstī daudzi cilvēki jau ir sākuši uzskatīt brīvību, demokrātiju, cilvēku tiesības kā pašsaprotams. Possibly undermining efforts to end. My people don't think they could ever be taken away. They think they are their birthright. But I'm equally shocked that people in Eastern Europe who have lived under tyranny in living memory would acquiesce to these two instruments without dissent. Domā, ka viņiem neviens neatņems šīs brīvības, ka tās ir viņu tiesības kaut kopš piedzimšanas. Un, uh, savukārt, es esmu šokēts par to, ka Austrumē Eiropā, kur cilvēki ir pieredzējuši tirāni, viņi arī ar mieru papļauties, kā tik viegli papļauties šiem uh, diviem uh, instrumentiem. Šovakar partijas likums un kārtība dibinātāja Alda Govesema pikets pret obligātu vakcināciju pie prezidenta Pils pulcēja daudzus tūkstošus cilvēku. Es nāku šeit, lai aizstāvētu savas cilvēku tiesi. Latvijas experience shows that rule of law, like democracy and respect for human rights, humans must retain control. Therefore, the UN must actively promote discussion of personal data protection in cyberspace, especially the ethical and legal standards for the collection and use of personal data. So in conclusion, we have to stand up for our human rights and for the human rights of future generations whose voices of thanks we will never hear. But we have to do it for our children. Thank you very much for listening to me.